So what we're going to do for this problem is going to do 4 <laughs> divided by 3 plus the square root of 2. All right? And ladies and gentlemen, remember, we cannot divide by a, ra a radical number on the bottom. So Ricardo, what you notice here is that we have the square, root of, the square root of 2 on the denominator. So we have to get the square root of 2 off the denominator. All right? We went over this last class period just very briefly. Um, and I believe, actually, even the bell went out right before we were about to get out, right? Yeah? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So what I want to do is I just want to show you guys a little bit on how we're going to get that radical off the bottom. Now, this is what I went over last class, period, and I'd just like to do it again. If you guys have 1 divided by square root of 2, to get the square root of 2 off the bottom, we rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 2. The reason being is because then you have the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 squared, which equals the square root of 2 over 2. No more radical on the bottom. But if you do that here, then you end up getting 4 radical 2 over 3 radical 2 plus 2. Again, you still have a radical on the bottom, right? So you're kind of what we call treading, treading your tires in mud. You're not going anywhere. So what we need to do is we need to think of a number that we can multiply by 3 plus the square root of 2 that is going to undo my square root. All right? Now, there's a special case. If you guys remember, x plus 1 times x minus 1. These are what we call a reference of two, difference of two squares. And the important thing about difference of two squares is remember when we multiply these out, x plus 1, x minus 1, we get x squared, x negative x, negative 1. Right? What happens to my middle terms? They add out to 0, right? They add to 0, so they're eliminated. So therefore, what I really just did is added the first two terms and the last two terms, right? which is pretty cool. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I, just, if I just multiplied my first two terms and my last two terms, would I then get rid of my square root? So let's multiply by what we call the conjugate. And the reason why we multiply by the conjugate is notice the conjugate is going to create a difference of two squares. So now all I have to do is multiply my first two terms and my last two terms, because then what that's going to do is I don't have to worry about my middle terms because it's a different difference of two squares. So I distribute the top, which I get 12 minus 4 square root of 3. Then I divide by 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 2 times square root, negative square root of 2 is going to be a negative Wait, 2. You have to multiply in the top and the denominator. Yeah, but that's the square root of 2 at the bottom. I don't know. I'm like losing it. There you go. Thank you. So does everybody follow me so far? 9 minus 2 is 7. Then we see, can we divide the 7 into both those terms? No, so we're just going to leave it as is. OK, that is it. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 is a negative, negative square root of 2 squared, which is just 2, negative 2. OK? OK. Why don't you just minus 12 with 4? Because you can't, because it's 4 times square root of 2. What's, what's 7 minus x?